Let's hear from Lincoln Hancock School with Kristen Dwyer. So proceed. Thank you. Good evening, school <coughs> committee, Superintendent Mulvey, leadership team, Mayor Koch. My name is Janet Loftus, and it is with great pride that I'm able to present our school improvement plan as the principal of Lincoln Hancock. Uh, nine years after my original start at this wonderful school. And I started at Lincoln in 2011 as a kindergarten teacher, and I've been the assistant principal since 2019. The word pride is one that we do not use lightly at Lincoln Hancock. Within seconds of walking through the doors of this school, it is easy to fully understand how great our students and our staff are. The positive atmosphere, the inclusiveness, for all our children and the dedication from our staff to meet the children where they are is second to none. The growth that our students show academically and socially and emotionally from the start of the year to the end is unmatched. It's a shame that sometimes the data does not always give such a clear picture. At the end of last year, we were fortunate enough to have a district-wide scheduling team that met in order to help support the CKLA curriculum coming in. In aligning and increasing our literacy time each day by grade level, we have now ensured that our students will be present during the most crucial times of their teaching, which will then align when all children are being pulled from their areas of support. Our revamp and scheduling is one of our biggest claims to fame today. The new scheduling enables there to be some fluidity within our EL groups each term, since now all our EL teachers' schedules allow them to attack one grade level at a time together. This alignment and scheduling will also benefit math and the new IM curriculum, so that again, our students are receiving the most support during their math block with the assistance of our special ed teachers and our math interventionists. We are hoping that this massive overhaul in scheduling will slow down the children's day to give them a smaller feel in such a huge school. It will provide the most amount of support within their core subject areas each day. There are many new initiatives at Lincoln Hancock that we are very proud of, such as the Southwest Middle School Lincoln Hancock Community Outreach Team. Volunteers for the team met and came up with some ideas to join the two schools in unity and strengthen our community connection. Our second graders have met with the fifth graders at Southwest for fun activities and projects at Kincaid Field. And our transitional kindergarten students have walked up to Southwest to have the, to have the LDC students assist them with using Lexia for the very first time. Our new culture club plans various events such as Pride Days, where everyone wears blue and yellow or their Lincoln Hancock gear, staff breakfast and sports themed days. We're having a pajama day the day before winter break, which is everyone is very excited about. And we decided just before we left school, we're gonna have fancy day on Valentine's Day. <laughs> the guidance staff along with myself has been teaching two open parachute lessons per classroom to introduce the new program. And then the homeroom teachers will continue the program to meet our social emotional goals. We'll be wrapping up our first round of extended, extended day activities the week before winter break. We've offered 14 clubs and over 180 students participated. Any student that put in an application was accepted into a club. We have a pickleball club, dance club, peer leaders, reading rock stars, and art club, just to name a few. The students are really enjoying extended day activities and the staff does as well. And now to reflect on last year's data. I cannot help myself but to share our strengths from last year first. A few highlights from the last school year. Our grade four MCAS scores in math were an average of 56% of students meeting or exceeding expectations. The state number at, uh, was at 42% in the same level. So we were very thrilled, although with COVID and the backslide, everyone's numbers were a little bit less to be above the state average for children meeting and exceeding expectations in the fourth grade is a huge sense of pride for us. Our amplified double scores in grade one, which measure how they are doing in learning how to read. The children came in in the fall at or above benchmark only 37%. By the end of the year, 66% of that grade was at or above benchmark. Again, a huge leap from the fall to the spring. 
As for the school's goals from last year, which were aligned with MAP data, our students did a great job meeting or coming close to meeting their goals in grades two through four. If we did not meet the goal, it was only missed by an average of three RIT points. The goals that were created this year were done collectively as a teaching unit after reflecting on last year and what our data was dictating this fall. I'm very grateful for all the input from our teams at Lincoln Hancock. In looking at last year's data in English language arts, we felt that it made the most sense to split out our goals. Last year, they just had a MAP goal. We also did this at Beachwood Knoll last year. We've now created a K-2 Amplify goal and a 3-4 to four MAP goal based on our current students' fall data. With the new scheduling that aligns all of our schedules in EL and lit literacy, we anticipate that now we have set up a system that will better support our early readers in order to build strong foundational skills, which will then continue to support our MAP goals in the upper grade levels in the years to come. Some action steps that support us, along with the scheduling overhaul, are our curriculum so showcases. We have had a number of teachers that are taking on the new <coughs> curriculum prior to the, the materials coming in. They have now opened up their classrooms to their colleagues to come in and see how it's going. It has been a really <coughs> great start to introducing CKLA to be able to see it in action. And we can, are looking to continue that across multiple grade levels so that teachers feel supported and prepared as the materials come in. We've been using Lexia across the entire school. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it has been a fabulous, fabulous support system, and the children are able to use it at home. And I know our families are very grateful for that. I also need to thank our digital literacy teacher for helping get that up and running with Clever. For our math goal, we are continuing to use the map data for grades two through four. We would like to see a bit more growth in our grade two scores. In particular, we are working closely with our math interventionists to monitor student progress each term. In looking at our fall data, we have found many of the students who fell in the yellow in our math scores were our literacy students from last school year. Finding this trend in the data allows us to provide very specific interventions within the classroom that will support these students as they're <coughs> learning how to read in conjunction with showing us their mastery of the math skills. Some action steps to support this, again, with the scheduling, um, are utilizing our two math interventionists a little differently this year because of the alignment. They're now able to push in, and we are also able to pull specific students out for an extra added support. <clears throat> Grade four found great success last year in differentiating parts of homework so that our students who were ready to move forward based on the learning continuum and map could do so at their pace, while students that needed more remedial homework were able to do that as well. In science, our goal remains the same as it did last year at Lincoln Hancock, with an increase of seven RIT points from fall to spring. We missed this goal by only one point last year, but it makes sense to continue uh, to keep it where it is, utilizing the Pearson curriculum in grades <coughs> three and four. Our science vertical team was able to dive into our fall data a little bit deeper, and the one trend that they found across three and four was that our students, that our English learners are consistently struggling in these um, assessments, which makes sense. <clears throat> Now we are able to talk a little bit more specifically um, with this knowledge to help get more leveled readers that can simplify language while still teaching science content. We're discussing how to put some strong EL accommodations into place vertically in the science curriculum to help support vocabulary acquisition as these students participate in their science classes. It's a wonderful bonus that our new reading program, CKLA, include so much science content into the knowledge strand, uh, which will then increase exposure for all of our students, which should in turn help build that content. Our fourth goal in the school improvement plan is focused on social <coughs> emotional learning. The guidance staff and myself are initiating open parachute lessons in each homeroom and completing a unit, and then the classroom teachers will take over and a total of three units will be finished by the end of the school year. All the students will have completed one unit before winter break. 
We're combining this initiative with restorative justice circles, which have been very helpful in addressing issues that we're seeing in the day to day. Our PBIS team and practices at Lincoln are very strong and embedded in our daily routines. Our students know what it means to be the pride and love being acknowledged for the positive choices that they make. Our newest team, the Lincoln Hancock Culture Club, plans fun activities and spirit days for students each month to help us celebrate. It's wonderful to be back doing traditional things now that COVID is over-ish. Um, as you can see from our vocal survey data, the children feel safe, they feel happy, and they feel accepted. When all is said and done, we have 554 <clears throat> children that come to Lincoln Hancock every day with a smile on their faces, happy to be there. Our families have been nothing but supportive this school year, and our staff love their students. We're both proud to be members of the Lincoln Hancock Elementary School, and we appreciate any and all feedback to help us continue growing as a community. Thanks. Thank you so much. Ms. Cahill, any comments, questions? Um, I just have a comment, and I want to say thank you for stepping up last year and taking over the reins, um, keeping the train on track, and obviously the, the scores look great, you know, um, especially in light of the population and the challenges you might have with languages and things like that. Um, my only, and this is an overall um, kind of questions for the system, is there any place on our website that has like a, an index of all of the acronyms that we have? There so, is. is. I there? just learned. Okay, good. QPAC, um, and I did not know this, and one of our PTO members brought it to our last PTO meeting. Uh, we're having three in person, one per term, and it was wonderful. They sent it to me. We made a ton of copies. There are so many acronyms that it just for anyone, whether you're an English speaker or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to print them, and they are on the QPAC website. Yep. QPAC. QPAC, not on yeah. QPAC. yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, mostly if, if someone is looking at these plans yeah. and, you know, not that as school committee people don't, we know what they all are, right? But, um, but you know, it's just, it, it, I think if a parent goes in or someone in the community goes in to take a look, um, it just helps them to understand what yeah. they're really looking at, you know? It might be a great idea as we're building our websites um, to add a link to that. So not yeah. only on the QPAC website, but maybe we could even link yeah, it to our Yeah, I think that own. would be so, helpful yeah, for everyone. And um, yeah, that, that's it. But thank you for your work. Thank you for taking the leap and, and helping the system. We appreciate it. Mr. Santa. Nice to see you both again. <laughs> I miss you walking my dog in the Beachwood playground. I <laughs> <laughs> And Kristen, how long has it been? Uh, what you Eighth grade graduation. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, you. You know what's great is the fact that um, you seem to know where your kids are mm -hmm. and what you need to do to get them uh, the help that they need. And um, I want to congratulate you on your grade four scores. They're, they're excellent. And uh, for all that you do in your staff, I just thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to mention also the collaboration with Southwest. Mm -hmm. is a wonderful, wonderful thing, like the community outreach. Um, I'm really, really impressed with your adding on to your, to your goals one and two by doing the, pre, the, pre -K, the K to two stuff, putting in the uh, Amplify and Dibbles and also the foundational math stuff, and actually putting that in your goals because we all know it doesn't really start in grade three and four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it starts way before that. So I think you're taking a proactive look at that. It's really, really wonderful. I have a question. This one is not necessarily for you, but it is one that we should investigate a little bit further about the reach numbers being so low. I mean, this you only have 9%. We were looking for 20% of that class. And I know that there are people moving in and out. And, but we, I would like to take a look at it across the district. This is not just you. I think it's only 10% at grade four. I did look oh, into this. Oh, you're I think right. It's, yes, I did I look into that um, right. in working with our executive council. You're right. Okay, so this, def, this doesn't have anything to do with you. Then, so great for it. And we lost two to moving out. Yeah, we did and have that. Ten. Happens. Absenteeism is a little concerning because those kids are high needs. Um, Fifty-six kids, high needs, and then you know that's going to impact everything that goes on in your school as well. But I'm, I'm really thrilled with uh, what I see. I think you have great diverse diversity there which is terrific, mm -hmm. um, and I really, really like the fact that you're looking so strongly at the growth, which is the most important thing. Anybody else? No, nope. Mr. Gattro? Yeah, I just want to say, great presentation, good plan. Uh, it feels like a good vibe right now this year at, at Lincoln Hancock. I, I was going to say what Mrs. Lebo said about the Southwest Connection. I love that. I think that is superb. 
Um, you know, especially when, when you think about the, the students that didn't get to go to their middle school because of COVID for a, a couple of years. This basically helps them to create that. So uh, love that. Um, you, you talked about um, acronyms. So, you know, I've worked in the environmental field 34 years. We have 7 million acronyms. I, I still don't know everything in my own field. Um, but you did mention something that we haven't talked about, at least I, I don't remember us talking about it here, Lexia. Could you walk through Lexia? Because you were applauding how wonderful Lexia is and what it's done for you and all of that. Yes. And maybe my colleagues know it intimately, but it's... Lexia is an online program that supports literacy development. Yeah. It's tailored to the individual student. So it levels them as they go, um, and it bumps them up levels and prints off beautiful reports for educators. We've always had a number of licenses, uh, more so in Title I schools, less in the other schools. And uh, with COVID, it, it was great that the company gave licenses to everybody, um, which was wonderful. Um, right now at Lincoln Hancock, we are able to have a license for every child, I think, due to Title I. Uh, so um, it really, to have children be able to work on this independently, they love it. And to know that it levels them so you can monitor their, their growth in reading. What am I missing? Anything? No, they love it. And it works for kindergarten all the way up to fourth grade. So, you know, they never age out of it. It's excellent. I just, I saw it more in your plan than the, the other uh, school yeah. improvement plans. So, and you mentioned it and you gave it a shout out. So I just wanted to get educated a little bit on it. Um, last thing is parental input. Do you, do you ask the, for parental input before the plan? comes yeah, to so us, or uh, if not in years, future years, that I think that's an expectation or a hope from us that you solicit input before it gets here. Yeah, so this year when we had our first assessment day, uh, we presented all of the data from last year. Um, so at our first PTO meeting, and that's then where we look to make goals for this year, mm -hmm. at our first PTO meeting, I also presented that data from last year um, to our PTO. Um, to let them know what I let the teachers know of where we landed last year and what we're looking to do in the fall. Um, my executive council is wonderful. They have gone through the school improvement plan with a fine pick comb, uh, toothpick, mm. just um, really helping me looking at things, even editing. They were lovely. So um, I don't know that the entire PTO has seen the final draft of it, which I could then share, but um, they definitely have been presented with the data. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Of course. Mayor? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept. And all the stuff from facilities, there isn't that much, but we're going to move it into this facility subcommittee meeting. Yep. Motion. Motion by Mrs. Cahill Sorry. to accept. Seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you. Everybody. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She also she wants to speak. She says. She um, just say it. Good evening, Mr. Hennessy. Thank you so much for coming, and you may go right ahead and present. Good evening, I am Jim Hennessy, the proud principal of the Wallace Mill Elementary School. This evening, I look forward to reflecting on our 2021-2022 school improvement plan, and I am very excited to share our 2022-2023 school improvement plan. Before I begin, I just want to take this opportunity to thank each of you for your dedication to the students of the Quincy Public Schools. To the members of this committee, to Superintendent Mulvey, to Assistant Superintendent Perkins, and to all the members of the SLT. On behalf of the Wollaston School community, I want to express our sincere appreciation for your constant support and for always putting Quincy students first. During the challenging years of COVID, you provided us the resources to succeed. But even before that, you have consistently provided and have consistently maintained class sizes for optimal student learning. We are most appreciative of this. I, have, of course, also need to thank our teachers and our staff. Every day, I have the chance to witness their dedication to our students, their commitment to high standards, and their ability to create a positive learning environment for all. We are also so grateful for the parents who become partners with us in their children's education. We are very fortunate to have such a strong partnership with our families and a very supportive PTO. Most importantly, we so greatly, greatly appreciate our students. Their resiliency after a couple of challenging years is inspiring, and it is a pleasure to watch them learn and grow each day. I want to take a moment to reflect on the goals that our staff set for our school last year 
and how we performed in the relationship to those goals. During the 21-22 school year, our goal was to ensure that all students demonstrated continuous growth in the areas of English language arts, mathematics, and science. We also wanted our school to continue to be a place that supports and promotes diversity, equity, and inclusion by providing social emotional learning opportunities for all members of the school community, both during and after the school day. We use the MCAS and the MAP assessment to measure our success. We are very proud to report that all tested grades demonstrated growth in the MAP student growth summary reports from the fall of 21 to the spring of 22 and exceeded the national norms in all grade levels. I'm also proud to report that the percentage of Wollaston School students who met or exceeded expectations in the MCAS exceeded the state in all areas in grade three, in all areas in grade five, and in ELA in grade four, and only missed it by 1% in grade four mathematics. We are proud of the results of the vocal survey and our positive learning environment. During the 22-23 school year, our goal setting reflects our commitment to learning recovery while supporting each individual student's social emotional learning needs. We again have set goals in the areas of ELA, math and science and social emotional learning and equity, diversity and inclusion. We will continue to use MAP and MCAS to measure our progress towards these goals. I would like to highlight some of our action steps in these areas. In the areas of ELA, we are very excited to be implementing the CKLA curriculum. Um, it is a lot of work that's ahead of us, but uh, it's nice to see the teachers excited about the new core knowledge and the different things that our students will be exposed to. Uh, just today, I walked into a teacher's room and the teacher was staring at a map of ancient Greece. He was a second grade teacher and was so excited to learn about um, ancient Greece. He told me the story of the origin of Marathon and the soldier that ran with the, uh, the feet of the Persians. And he was so excited. I was like, oh my God, that's going to be infectious for our students. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that unravel in the next, this year and next year. We're excited to be continuing to using handwriting without tears in grades one and two. Uh, we're using the Hegarty Phonemic Awareness Program in kindergarten and first grade. We're incorporating scholastic news for skill work with informational text. We're increasing our usage of Lexia Core 5, particularly in first grade. We're using the map data to differentiate our instruction. And we're identifying integrating literature into classroom instruction that values diversity, manages the dynamics of differences, avoids stereotypes, and allows students to acquire cultural knowledge. In mathematics, we're implementing the illustrative math in grades three through five. And we're also supporting those teachers that are in their second year in K kindergarten through second. We're continuing our number talks, our guided math in our classrooms. We are very excited and we have welcomed a math interventionist to Wollaston. Uh, she's, she's amazing and she's working with our teachers and our students one day a week. Um, we're very fortunate to add her to the team this year. Um, we're also enhan enhancing our family engagement in the area of mathematics um, through online tools and communication because as we know, mathematics looks very different than it did just a few years ago. So we want to keep parents with us on the journey. In science, we're using the Elevate Text in the Savas online curriculum for science instruction. We're increasing opportunities for writing informational text to present data. We're using our science vertical teams to identify areas of need. And we're implementing mystery science in grades K to 5. In the areas of social emotional and learning and diversity, equity, and inclusion, I'm very excited to start using a new s'mores new letter, newsletter platform, which each week parents are getting an update from me talking about what's happening at the school, upcoming events. And the greatest feature of that is with one click of a button, the whole newsletter is translated into several different, and actually all languages. Um, and it, it has been having a great um, response from our families. Our teachers are communicating through Seesaw, through Class Dojo, also using Aspen, of course, for email exchanges. Our restorative justice circles are continuing to be up and running. Um, we're happy to incorporate the open parachute circles with the uh, open parachute within those circles. Um, we're implementing monthly themes that are aligned with the citywide EDI team. We're maintaining the check-in, check-out for our identified students. We've increased the membership of our fifth grade student council. We just started an extended day EDI clubs where our teachers partnered with parents um, to run something about their culture or programs. We use the skills of the parents and the teaching skills of our teachers. They partnered up and we are excited to share that our students had the opportunity to learn about Chinese calligraphy, Indian dance, origami, and Mexican clay. Our PTO is committed to bringing people together. We've, uh, we've had our family meetups, we've had orientations, our open houses, we've had our fun run. We had a trunk and treat just this past, uh, over for Halloween. We had, we're upcoming Winter Wonderland dance coming up in January. We have uh, bingo nights and family days. They're committed to bringing our families together, um, building the relationships among our families. 
Uh, I'm excited for the year ahead and the work that is ahead. I thank you for, me, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, we're excited for the future success of our students. And I, of course, welcome any feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, Mr. Santoro? Yes. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Hennessy. Um, raised a good chunk of change for a PTO. You should give <laughs> other schools some ideas because uh, <laughs> that's a nice chunk of change. It's a committed yeah. group we have. We're very pr a privileged. Yeah. Hard work. I do want to just congratulate you on um, this uh, exceeding expectations for um, the third and fifth grade and almost the fourth and everything. So especially the grade five science, 70 percent of your kids exceeded uh, expectations uh, um, above and above the state average. So congratulations to you and your staff and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just want to reiterate the map data was incredible too, really impressive, the kind of growth that you got last year. Um, I love the fact that you've included kindergarten in your ELA goal because we, we talked about this earlier. There was, it really does start in kindergarten to get the kids ready. Um, I really, really like the um, fact that see, the chronic absenteeism was zero. So obviously, they like going to school and they're coming to school. And it's a diverse population, but you're really getting the message out to those people. And I mean, when you have nobody with excessive absenteeism, that's that's really a it says something about the culture, as as does the vocal survey. So I'm very pleased to see that. Um, and to your point, Mr. Santoro, 52% of this population is low income, and he still raises that kind of money. So the commitment from the from the families there is enormous that the PTO is able to do that through. And I think it's a testament to you and your staff that they are willing to do that kind of work with you. Anybody else? Thank you. Mrs. Hoobly, no? Mr. Bagoli, all set? I'm Mr. good. Mr. Ketchum, you're good? Excellent. Gentlemen? Thank you so much. Good, good work, Kim. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. So, Thank you. So Thank I'm you. going to entertain a mo oh, anything from facilities is going into the facilities subcommittee. I'm going to entertain a motion to accept. I have one question about that. OK, go ahead. Right I just have one question. Sure. The oven in the hallway, is that <laughs> is that accessible to the kids? Um, <laughs> it, it is in the hallway where people pass through. Someday, Students. I believe, there's going to be a <clears throat> there is a foundation that's out there that's been poured, so it's coming someday, I hope. We, got, we have to look at that. Facilities. Yeah. We do. Okay. We do. All right. Okay. Thank you. Motion to accept, Mrs. Cahill. Second. Second. Mrs. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Acting you. Acting Principal O'Connor and Mr. Rogan. Hi. Thank you for having us. Good to see you. And you can go right ahead and present. Okay. <clears throat> Members of the school committee, good evening. It is an honor to be here tonight as the Acting Principal of Marymount School. Mr. Rogan, our Assistant Principal and fifth grade teacher, and I are here before you to present our school improvement plan. I would like to begin by thanking Mayor Koch and the school committee, Superintendent Mulvey, Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins, as well as the SLT for the support they have given me during my transition into this role. I also want to thank the Marymount School community for welcoming me. It is my role to now continue to carry on Marymount traditions whilst introducing new traditions, as well as leading the school through continued academic, social, and emotional recovery, growth, and change. Marymount staff is committed to creating a positive school climate and culture our staff work with students throughout the day to provide a constructive environment that supports academic, social, and emotional growth. This year, we will be expanding our illustrative math program universally across grade levels. This program requires a great deal of math discussion through math talks, along with number sense and skills. It is so amazing to see students working with whiteboards and manipulatives to solve real world math problems. We also welcomed a math interventionist this year and we are so thankful for her time with us. We are working on implementing our new core ELA program, CKLA. This will undoubtedly help our readers and writers grow. Some of our teachers couldn't wait to start the program and it's so wonderful to see the integration of reading and writing within the lessons. This year, we have scheduled a win what I need block, which also allows classroom teachers to differentiate for both advanced learners, while other students that need more support are pulled out for targeted intervention. 
Analysis of Marymount's MCAS results as well as MAP data show that the action steps and initiatives that our school put into place for the 2021-2022 school year had a positive <clears throat> impact for our students. According to the MAP assessment in the spring of 2022, the mean RIT score for our students in grades two to five in reading, math, and science was above the national norms on all assessments. According to the spring 2022 administration of MCAS, a higher percentage of Marymount students achieved meeting or exceeding expectations than the state in seven out of seven subject tests. We made significant progress with our ELA goal last year. Kindergarten and grade one met their stated Dibbles goal. Grade two was just shy of meeting their goal. However, there was a significant progress and they met their stated MAP goal. Grades three and, through and five met their stated MAP goals and grade four was just shy but still made solid progress. Our math goal showed tremendous progress with grades two to five exceeding their stated MAP goals, which we were thrilled to see. We made significant progress toward our science goal with grade four just shy of meeting their stated MAP goal and grade five exceeding their MAP goal. Our SEI goal was met with the successful implementation of restorative practices. We are using Dibbles and MAP scores again this year for our ELA goals and MAP scores for our math and science goals. Although our goals might seem ambitious, our teachers feel that with our action steps and with the amazing effort of our students that these goals are attainable. It is evident from the spring vocal results of this survey that students feel positively overall of the engagement environment and safety at Marymount. Our sense of community is strong and within the walls of our building and that feeling extends beyond as well. We have a very supportive PTO who helps wel helped welcome us and kindergarten families for popsicles in August, dozens and dozens of students at the trunk or treat in October, and families to a school-sponsored fun run this month. Our school council gives valuable input on communication and school initiatives, as well as feedback on the SIP goals this year. Our EDI committee meets regularly we celebrate monthly themes and provide resources to our teachers and families, including presentations and read aloud books. We are planning a Lunar New Year celebration this winter, a Women in Our Community event in March, and we are bringing back our International Night in April. We plan to launch the Marymount Family Cookbook, Recipes from Around the World, as a way to celebrate the diversity of our school. We will also be offering an extended EDI program this year to give our students the opportunity to experience activities important to many of our different cultures. Mr. Rogan will now talk about our SEI goal, our PBIS program, our extended day opportunities, and how we foster leadership opportunities for our students. Thank you, Ms. Shaikhan. I'm happy to share some information with you about the positive steps that we're taking to support the social emotional wellness of our students. As part of our social emotional goal, we will be implementing the district-wide open parachute program in all of our classrooms throughout the school year. With the support of our guidance counselor and our school psychologist, our goal is to complete at least five lessons in each classroom throughout the year. We're also committed to continuing our restorative circles within our classrooms. In addition, we have reinvigorated our focus on implementing PBIS within our school. With many new teachers on staff, this was a great opportunity for us to feel like we could go back to basics in defining what respectful, responsible, and ready behavior looks like throughout our school, including the classrooms, the hallway, the bathrooms, and the cafeteria. In addition to the Tier 1 implementation of PBIS, we also have begun to implement Tier 2 aspects of PBIS through discussions with teachers, the SST team, students, and parents. One example is the check-in, check-out system, which allows for more targeted behaviors to be addressed while providing students with multiple opportunities throughout the school day to receive positive feedback. Ms. Shea Connor and I have started our virtual monthly assemblies, which we enthusiastically refer to as our PBIS show, <laughs> recognizing students for their accomplishments and displaying our monthly character trait. We're also excited to introduce our book vending machine this month, which we're really excited about. It was purchased by our PTO, and these students that are recognized each month will have an opportunity to receive a book that will recognize our accomplishments. And looking at the results of the vocal survey, 
we were happy to see that an overwhelming percentage of students believe that school rules are fair for all students. However, we were surprised to see a low percentage of students who believe that they've been able to help decide school rules. So we've increased our opportunities for students to step into leadership roles. When you arrive at Marymount School in the morning, you'll see dozens of fifth grade students coming to school early before school with their orange safety patrol vests to help younger students. They walk the younger students down to the cafeteria for breakfast. They hold their hands when they get off the bus and they walk them to their lines. They walk them to their classes when the bell rings and they deliver lunches to them on Wednesdays. If you went to the school after the bell rings, you'll hear a student on the intercom reciting the daily lunch menu, leading the school in the Pledge of Allegiance and reviewing the daily announcements. You then might find the fifth graders zipping around the school with our PBIS prize card on a Friday morning, delivering the PBIS prizes to students throughout the school. During the last few minutes of the school day, our fifth graders again act as role models. They help our kindergarten students get to the correct dismissal line, whether it's a bus line, a daycare line, or a walker line. They walk with them, they hold their hands, they carry their backpacks, and they wait with them along with the teachers until they're picked up by their parents. Our Unity Day celebration in October was also student-led, with students adding messages of kindness, inclusion, and acceptance onto an orange slip of paper, which student leaders turned into a chain representing the whole school, which is now proudly display displayed in our front hallway. Our hope is that by providing these leadership opportunities and more explicitly involving the students, they'll see the firsthand positive impact that they have on the culture of the school. We're also providing unique opportunities for our students beyond the school day. In the fall, we were able to offer academic programs, mindfulness programs, creative opportunities, a relaxing walking club, and a collaborative outdoor exercise program. We're excited to be able to offer many more opportunities in the winter and the spring as well. Ms. Shea Connor and I appreciate your time and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to highlight some of the positive things that we have going on at Marymount. Thank you. Thank you very much. Comments, questions? Um, no, I just, I, the one comment I did have is um, for the principal at Lincoln Hancock was thank you for taking the opportunity to step up and, and be the principal at the school in the middle of the year and keeping the trains on track and keeping everything going forward and that's why you have a school community that you have. So thank you for the work you're doing. It looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Santoro. Thank you. Um, it, students deciding school rules seems to be a common theme throughout the city. So it's not just your school. And it's a good thing that we're all paying more attention to it and having kids do that. So thank you for that. And also just congratulations on exceeding uh, expectations on all your scores. Congratulations to you and your staff. Thank you. I just want to reiterate that your math, MAP scores were incredible last year. They really were. And so it's so nice. And I think, you know, zero, zero chronic absenteeism. The kids are there, so they're getting taught. And that's all it takes is for kids to show up and be exposed to a staff like this who is so supportive. Um, I'm very, very happy that you're using Amplify and Dibbles in your goals, too, mm -hmm. and making sure that we're looking at younger kids as we talk about assessing third through fifth graders. Um, I love the wind block. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds terrific. Mm -hmm. It really does sound terrific. And I know for anything in the facilities, we'll move into the facility subcommittee meeting. I want you to know that I know firsthand, as you know, that what after school looks like at Mount Marymount and those fifth graders with those kindergarten students, it's like they were their parents. Yes, they, mm -hmm. well, they, they have really clutched two them. kids by the hand. <laughs> So cute. Usually holding a backpack or two, you know, walking them out mm -hmm. and handing them to somebody. So it's just, it's, they really are stepping up. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's kind of interesting about the map data. I, I, I'm looking forward to talking about this with, um, with the SLT, I mean the vocal data, um, because there are some things that I don't know why kids have to, I don't, some of the questions like, well, I don't really want them doing that. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, like, do they have to go home from school and talk about, do they have to learn more at home what they learned at school? I want them to go out and play after school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why is that question even in there? You know, yeah. but whatever. And the vocal data. It's just me. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm perfectly good though. It was a great presentation. I appreciate it, Mrs. Hubley. I'm good. You're good, Mr. Dolly. Oh, you have Mr. Yeah. Brown. Uh, great to see um, my old my old uh, friend. Uh, John was a teacher there when I was uh, at Marymount. Spent 22 years there and uh, had a great experience. And, uh, it sounds like it's still. A great school. Um, I love the fact that the fifth graders are doing what they're doing with the young kids. <clears throat> I think that builds community. 
um, within the school. They're you know, role models for the other kids. Um, and that's, that's uh, it's really special. So I don't know whose idea that was, but. Uh, Mrs. Santoro. This guy over here. No, I, I'm uh, I'm really pleased with uh, with everything. So, I keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gatro. I'm good. You Thank good? you, gentlemen. All set. Good. Thank you. Good job. I will entertain a motion to accept. Motion. Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So nice to see you. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Ms. McNeil and Ms. Welch, you may start. Well, good evening, Mayor Koch, members of the school committee. Thank you for, the, for your time and for the opportunity to present the school improvement plan this evening. I am joined by Acting Assistant Principal Katie Welch. I am so proud to be the Principal of Parker and to present our plan to you this evening. I am proud of the resilience, flexibility, strength, and compassion of our entire school community. Although there have been some challenges in the past three years, I believe the entire Parker community has worked together to meet those challenges, students, teachers, and families. And we have done that with your support and with the support of the superintendent and the leadership team. <coughs> the school improvement plan before you this evening focuses on continued achievement, excuse me, continued improvement in both teaching and learning while at the same time providing a safe <coughs> and nurturing environment for our students. When preparing for our presentation this evening, I thought of the past couple of weeks as sort of a snapshot in the life of Parker. Students are enjoying before and after school activities. Currently, we have peer leaders, box before school, and after school project adventure. The Parker DEI team recently met to plan events, including our professional book group, a one school, one book, reading Dumpling Days by Grace Lynn, our PTO sponsored an author craft night, welcoming a local author, Carla Marrero, to read from her book, talk about the writing process, and answer students' questions. PTO is right now busy planning a family cocoa night with Santa. First graders led a Thanksgiving PBIS assembly, emphasizing gratitude, and teachers are looking forward to upcoming report card conferences to meet with families. Teachers are meeting collaboratively, participating in professional development, and implementing new curricular resources. Yes, we have very high standards for students at Parker, but I think those high standards are balanced with a high degree of support. There's a safety net for students in need of intervention. Intervention groups are flexible and data-driven, and our ILT process allows for teachers to work together to identify students in need of additional support. We are especially appreciative of the addition of a math interventionist at Parker. So thank you for that. In addition to accelerating academic learning, Parker teachers are supporting students' social and emotional well-being. This is done through explicit teaching of social and emotional skills in a safe and caring environment. We are implementing open parachute lessons across all grade levels continuing our implementation of community circles and supporting students' social and emotional needs. Although there is always room for improvement, vocal survey results indicate that over 90% of Parker fourth and fifth graders feel my teachers care about me as a person. Parker is and will continue to be an incredibly kind, caring, hardworking, dedicated teaching and learning community. I'll now turn it over to Katie to talk about assessment. So when we, we considered our 2022 MCAS results, it was important to keep in mind the context. 2022 was the first full MCAS given to students since before the pandemic. 
There is some evidence of learning loss recovery, but progress is uneven across the grade levels and content areas. In the area of English language arts, scores have declined when compared to pre-pandemic testing, although at grades three and four, students are outperforming the state. There is slight improvement at all grades when comparing 2021 scores to 2022 scores. It is hoped that this trend will continue. Our action steps include multi-tiered systems of support, as well as aligned intervention and implementation of a new curricula that should accelerate student learning and test scores. In mathematics, student scores have shown slight improvement as well from 2021 to 2022, with third and fourth grades once again outperforming the state. There is a decline in scores for both fourth and fifth from pre-pandemic scores, but third grade continues to show the trend of heading in the right direction from even before the pandemic. Our action steps here include implementation of a new curriculum and support of our math interventionists in order to close gaps and improve student test scores. In science MCAS testing for grade five, there has been a decrease since before the pandemic, but once again, a slight increase in comparing scores from 2021 to 2022. Our action steps include utilizing past MCAS test questions and continuing our SAVAS Realize curriculum. In addition to our MCAS scores, our goals for 2021 to 2022 included growth in our MAP RIT scores, measuring student growth. And at Parker, results showed growth across all grade levels in all subject areas. Students in grades two through five reached their 2021 to 2022 goals in ELA and in math. Grade two, three, and four actually doubled the goal for growth in ELA, and in math, all four grades doubled their goal for growth. Grades four and five also met their growth goals in science, doubling the goal in grade four. Our goals and action steps at Parker are really a team effort, and teachers work in our teams to analyze data and also develop formative assessments throughout the year to identify the individual needs of our students. Teachers will continue to target their instruction based upon their needs, those needs. God bless you. <laughs> Looking ahead to the plan before you, Parker teachers will continue to work collaboratively toward the goal of strengthening student achievement while supporting emotional, social and emotional needs. As we work towards this goal, the focus will be on how we can provide excuse me, intervention and support to accelerate student learning. We've proposed ambitious goals using both MCAS and MAP data in reading mathematics and science. Parker team, teacher teams have worked together to develop action steps in support of these goals. Highlights include in the area of ELA, instructional strategies to promote students' ability to read, write, and think critically. This includes implementation of a new curricular resource, amplify CKLA, kindergarten through grade five, in addition to implementing a high quality core instructional resource, teachers are using high quality supplemental resources, including Lexia and Hegarty Phonemic Awareness. Assessments include literacy screeners, dyslexia screeners, Amplify M class, and MAP assessment. Data is regularly analyzed during ILT meetings, and more formative data, including progress monitoring, is analyzed at grade level team meetings. <clears throat> Through participation in the GLEAM grant, teachers are participating in professional development designed to improve reading skills and comprehension. Um, our mathematics goal is supported by action steps that include rolling out our new core resource, illustrative mathematics, at grades three through five. Kindergarten through grade two is continuing their professional development and implementation from last year. In addition to our new implementation of our curricular resource, our guided math and center-based instruction will continue to be utilized in kindergarten through grade five. Number talks are embedded into math instruction to deepen our students' conceptual understanding. And through the support of our school committee, we have been fortunate to receive the support of a school in of math interventionist, excuse me. The math interventionist is supporting our classroom teachers through the on-site math, math coaching and professional development, particularly with our new program, and is a part of our data teams to use benchmarks and formative, formative data in her intervention groups. 
Our science goal is supported by integrating inquiry-based hands-on activities across all grade levels. When walking through Parker School during science time, you will see engaging STEM bin lessons and projects and standards-based online, online tools being used in the primary grades. Kits from the Museum of Science, Engineering is Elementary program are being used in grades three to five, along with our core curricular resources. Science instruction at Parker continues to be fun, engaging, and interactive. Well, I think you might be biased to teach science, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree. Um, <laughs> highlights of social emotional learning at Parker include implementing open parachute at all grade levels. Teachers are also continuing their commitment to community circles. Each teacher at Parker has committed to implementing a circle in their classroom a minimum of twice a week. I know we were talking this afternoon about doing one together in fifth grade around some friendship issues. That never happens in fifth grade. <laughs> um, but I think we're able to do that because it's such a core part of the regular program. DEI initiatives include a diversity-themed one school, one book, an after-school voluntary teacher book group, implementing diversity-themed cultural events, such as our Lunar New Year celebration, SEL supports, including implementation of PBIS, guidance lessons, and check-in and check-out for students who might need more support. To conclude, Parker School has wonderful students, supportive families, and caring teachers. I am so very grateful for the support of the school committee, the superintendent, and his leadership team. Parker is a vibrant school community, and I am proud to be the principal. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, I, I really don't have much to say. I only have one question is that or comment. Um, it's the work that you're doing is, is amazing in light of the fact that you have like 57% of the students are either English learners or, or former English learners, and that's huge, right? And to be able to have the success you're having with your scores and everything I think is really impressive. So um, I wanted to say thank you for that. And you know, a couple of the other principals mentioned the S'mores platform for um, translating newsletters. Do you guys Oh, that, that has been phenomenal. I should have mentioned, thank you that. Yeah, because um, that Sounds good. The translation service is available both through the language line and um, that translate this. The, the, the name yeah. escapes me because I'm a little nervous right now, but <laughs> okay. um, has been phenomenal. Yeah. And I always say to families, call. It's on us to find someone to help. If you have an issue or a need or a question, don't let language, and this is through a translator, but don't let language stand in the way. It is on us to sort it out. And because of your support and these new resources, it is way less challenging. Yeah. Um, so much appreciated. It's Thank amazing. you. Yeah. OK, great. I was just wondering. And, and Lexia, my granddaughter, loves it. Oh, kids she's love like it. She's on it all the time. She, she thinks she's playing video games. Yeah, that's just it. They don't know they're learning. It's yeah, like yeah. snuck in. So it's great. <laughs> but um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Santoro. Thank you. Just congratulations um, <clears throat> with so many people new to, uh, new to your, uh, this country, children as well as adults, <clears throat> to show the uh, growth trends that um, your school has accomplished is uh, something to congratulate you. Oh, thank you. So I do congratulate you. and um, Still and, more work to do, but thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> well, you did excellent in grades three and four as it is. and. Uh, and uh, like I said, the growth trends are going in the right direction. And uh, congratulations to you and your staff. Congratulations. Thank you. I just want to reiterate that the map, the map growth is, I mean, the, uh, in math it was outstanding, really outstanding. And the MCAS is also, except for that one little dip, is doing very, very well. But what I really appreciate the most about this is you were so transparent in what your real concern is about pre. I mean, we can all say how we are according to the state, knowing that everybody dipped. But looking at where you really want to be, where you were before the pandemic. So that statement in the beginning, where you actually are so transparent about that, I, re I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank that. you. So it makes me feel like you really, really understand. Like I said, this, uh, we're I proud just, of our success, but there's definite work to do. Right. The vocal survey, very, very good. Um, the class size is phenomenal. Oh, I again, that's <laughs> thanks phenomenal. to your support, but I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah, really phenomenal, which is great. Um, the facility stuff, we're going to move right into the facility subcommittee meeting. 
But I really, and I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the book because now I'm going to look it up, the author craft book. So I, was, I wanted to ask you that, but you, I wrote it down now. So I noticed. And your family engagement and your extended day op opportunities are so diverse. They really are. And they're really capturing, uh, capturing a lot of kids. So I'm very thrilled with this report. And I want to thank you. Thank all those people. I'd like to thank you, the administrators also, for leading the charge there and making everybody feel so welcome. Mrs. Hoobly. Thank you. Actually, I was going to mention the class size as well. Um, is that correct? You have a hundred percent of your classes are under twenty or fewer students. That's we're very fortunate. That's Agreed. wonderful, and that's thanks to your support. So thank you. Great, thank you, and great presentation. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Mr. McGillie. I had the pleasure of working with Ms. McNeil at Marymount. She was a fabulous teacher then, and um, I can see that she's continued as a principal in the same uh, direction. So. It was a Parker's. few years ago, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she's so nervous. She's not like that. No. <laughs> Great job. Mr. Okay. Yeah. you good? Yeah. Gentlemen, anybody? Good. Okay, I'd, good I'd like job. to, oh, the facility stuff I said we're going to move. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept. Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Santoro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.